What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking out a sandbox survival game called The Infected. If you're a fan of stuff like Seven Days to Die or The Forest, you may find this one appealing. It landed on my desk about a year ago, and I've been sort of putting off doing any sort of video on it, because I felt like it wasn't ready, like it wasn't there yet. It was kind of like empty and didn't, like there was promise, obviously, like the building aspects of the game are very, very good. But when it came to actual content that was inside of the game, back when I got it, there wasn't a whole lot there. And so I kind of shelved it and I was like, I'll check in. But it seems like the developers have been doing a pretty good patch cycle, and it seems like they're working really, really hard to kind of get things configured, and so I figured it's time. Let's dive on in. If you've never seen The Infected before, it's a sandbox survival game with kind of like, they're not like really zombies. The best way I know how to describe it is they're kind of like the zombies from I Am Legend, where they're more like vampires than anything else. Like they hang out in the darkness, like they don't like coming out in the sunlight. And so anyways, you gotta build up a base and do the seven days to die thing before the horde waves come through. Let's start a new game. If after watching this you wanted to get the game for yourself, I have a link for you down below in the description. And then, let's see, I'm gonna leave this all on the default. We'll call this one like, nerd. There it is, nerd. And then we'll dive on in and see what we've got going on here. Okay, so here we are inside the game world. Uh, you pretty much always start out in the same spot. It's kind of like this weird dusty patch <laughs> that's in like... There's always like a little lake next to it. It's always like a dusty patch with a lake next to it. Like this place seems like if too many kids were running around like playing football or something like it would get dusty real real fast and you get like those gnarly boogers in your nose that are like half dirt and half booger therefore they become like super boogers that like stab you all the time. But anyways, I digress. Uh, we just picked up a rock. There are some things that we need to get done right here at the beginning of the game. There's, I thought that was a bird for a second, but that's a rock. So apparently my ability to like bird watch out here has been weak. We got a couple of rocks. We got a couple little things laying around. We need to make an ax first and then we need to make a pickaxe too so that we can get going. It's crafting survival, dude. You can pretty well assume that we're probably gonna be like knocking over trees and doing all kinds of random stuff. We're gonna be doing a little bit of foraging Later on, we gotta find some wild cucumbers and ride them on down. You need to be careful out here. The corn plants, they like to live a wild and crazy life, and they don't take no prisoners. Uh, with all of the stretch of green right here, I'm gonna show you a trick for finding food that's a little bit faster, as long as you're okay for being, like, cheesy. Just because, like, there's so many plants and things around that sometimes it can be really, really hard to find the things that are harvestable. But first things first, let's play around with the crafting. So first thing you need to know about the infected is that you've got this little list right here, which is telling you, like, what you should work on. These are all the technologies that you found on the map. You find those from, like, locations of interest. This right here is going to be kind of your encyclopedia. It's going to tell you how to build pretty much everything in the game. So if you're a little bit confused about what craft Crafting recipes require what? This is going to be the place where you're going to want to look. But the thing that we need to do is we need to make an axe. So it's going to take a stick and a small stone. So there you go. Stick, small stone. We're going to have to split one off here, though. I'm going to drag these over to here. The game is very, very specific about what it wants you to put inside of here. So if it says, like, you need one cloth, you actually have to take off, like, one piece of cloth and put it inside of here. If you put, like, five sticks, five cloth, and, like, five of something else in there, and it takes one of each of those things, it will not activate sort of the menu, I guess. Uh, we've got ourselves our axe. There it is on our backpack in sort of, like, a green hell type way. We can press the one key to break that on out, and then we can chop down trees and stuff now. We've actually moved up the chain. That's going to give us access to plant fibers, which is, like, the really, really big one. Uh, then we need to get a pickaxe going. So to get a pickaxe going, we're going to take a rock over here, and we're just going to throw it on here, and it's going to turn into a blade. Then we're going to take one of these bad boys right here, put it on right there, put that on right there, split off like... Oh, that's a bandage. I need... Oh, I don't have any plant fibers. Never mind, that's not gonna work. Uh, we're gonna have to chop down a tree so that we can get some plant fibers. I'm sort of like cautiously looking to the hinterland over here in the hopes that maybe I see some food laying around so that I don't have to be like a cheesy bastard on screen. I'm still gonna show you the trick for finding food either way, but... You know, I was hoping that I could find one sort of in a vacuum by myself, but dude, the foliage, this is what the foliage on medium, dude, if you put the mo if you put the foliage on, like, maximum, you will never find a harvestable plant for the rest of your life. So if you're watching videos on YouTube of this game, and you're sort of, like, shocked by how sparse the landscape is, go ahead and ask the content creator, like, how high they have their foliage up, because... Like, the foliage can be really, really, like, thicket nasty in this game. Like, the kind of stuff you would never want to hike through. I don't see any plants or anything around, but then again, they tend to blend in really, really well. So, like, it's possible that I'm just overlooking them. There's a bird right there. He's flying around. Well, that's not really flying. That's more walking, meandering. 
There's a number of, I, I think, like random verbs that would go along with what he's doing. So we've got some logs, and I think we've got the plant fibers now. So now I'm going to make that pickaxe. We'll throw that on in there. We'll split that off, and we'll put that in there. Isn't that what I needed for the pickaxe? Do I need to check my... All right, I got to check my encyclopedia. Hold on. Encyclopedia. Let's see here. Two it's two plant fibers. Dose plant fibers. Gotcha. All right, we'll split you off right there. We'll split you off right there. Bam! Pickaxe. And now we've got this nice, shiny rock pick over here that we can use to kind of, like, knock away some of the stuff in this area. Uh, there's one of the plants right there. I found one. Aha! With no assistance. It's a cucumber plant. I don't think there's a lot of calories inside of a cucumber. It makes me think. Somebody told me the other day that they get heartburn when they have cucumbers. And to me, like, I was really, really trying to decide, like... It's just water, right? It's like getting heartburn from eating a watermelon. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to disparage the struggle here, all right? I developed GERD after I had, like, a... I had, like, a bunch of antibiotics, basically. I got, like, a really bad stomach infection. And I had to have, like... I was on antibiotics for, like, five months. And they were, like, the nuclear option to antibiotics. And, like, after that, I had GERD, basically. Like, I got heartburn from, like, everything. Because I guess it, like, wiped out my gut floor or whatever. So, like, I get it. I'm empathizing in my roundabout way. But, like, we're, we're, we're getting to the point here in that, like, I don't think, like, watermelon or, like, cucumber have anything going on inside of them other than, like, water and skin. So that's a pretty wild reaction. Then again, I say that knowing full well. I'm actually allergic to watermelon. I can't have it. I get all itchy and scratchy whenever I eat it. Sucks. Started happening when I was, like, 16. Used to be a big watermelon in the summertime fan. Not so much anymore because I'm pretty sure that if I have watermelon, my throat will close off and kill me. All right, so as for the trick to find, let's get back to the subject here. As for the trick to find, like, things that are harvestable, turn off your foliage. That's seriously the easiest way to do this, and I'm going to give you an example of why you should do this right here when you're a new player to the infected. All right, you see that potato plant right there? Look at that potato plant right there. All right, so I'm going to step back by, like, ten paces, and then we're going to turn the foliage back on maximum. Where did the potato plant go? Where is the potato plant? You see it? <laughs> That's why you turn the foliage down right there. Like, seriously, unless you're really, really good at this game, when you're brand new, I highly recommend that you turn the foliage off. Or at least turn it down to, like, medium or something, so you got, like, a slightly better chance. If you're trying to remain, like, somewhat authentic in your playthrough, see, I've lost it, and I'm only on medium right now. There it is, this little plant right here. I'm going to take that dirter right there. I'm going to throw that dirter on up inside my inventory. And then I'm going to eat its face off, for I am the dirter killer. Okay, so I wandered around and we've gathered up a little bit of food. We don't have, like, a ton of food, but we have, like, a little bit of food. Uh, we've got, you know, some cucumbers and stuff around here. We've got a couple of potatoes. They start you out with an MRE because they're generous, and then they start you out with a flask of water as well so that you can quench your thirst for the first day or so. But anyways, I've still got the foliage turned off, but let's look at the building system because I think that the building system... I was kind of going through the reviews of this game. Like, when it first dropped, I sort of saw this game as kind of being like, oh, look, another sandbox game. You know what I mean? Because there's so many of them on Steam that aren't necessarily, like, doing anything new or interesting. And I was kind of surprised when I checked back in on this game, like, a year later to find that it had, like, a gazillion reviews, like, 95% positive or whatever. It's always like, all right, there must be something here. Like, I must have misjudged it from my earlier look at the game. And honestly, I think what people are drawn to is kind of like the modular building system uh, which seems to be pretty cool so let's like build some stuff yeah I'm gonna go into my inventory what are you doing dear are you just all right bye it was nice to meet you I'm gonna name that dear Derek Derek the deer although I think it's a lady deer and so Derekina there we go we'll name it Derekina that's easier uh, we got to build some stuff so we got to do a saw bench that's gonna take four wooden logs and so we'll put a saw bench in like I don't know We'll do like a saw bench right there. There we go. That looks good. And then what I'd like to do is I kind of want these to go like back to back so that we have multiples of them so that we can process more logs at once. Unfortunately, I got to get it lined up. That seems about right. That'll do. All right, cool. So we've gotten our benches over here that are all ready to rock. we got to add some materials to it, though. So we're going to have to chop down some trees. Spoiler alert, this area is going to get really, really sparse with the vegetation. So workbench number one is done. I've just been chopping down trees. 
and kind of looking for resources to get done. I don't think it's possible to make a survival simulator without at least some portion of the gameplay being sacrificed to the gods of tree chopping. There we go. And then once we've got this thing right here, we just add a log to it, and it'll process it. Like, the boards will just come out here on the side. You don't have to do anything. It's like a magical log press that, like, you don't have to do anything with. Like, it all functions by itself. Uh, a thing to keep in mind is a lot of the resources in this game will despawn if you leave them on the ground for too long. So keep an eye on that, obviously. Uh, we'll go ahead and get these started. However, logs are not one of those items. Logs actually stay on the ground pretty much forever. Uh, if you're interested, I would definitely recommend when you play this game, kind of looking up what items disappear on the ground and what items do not. Now that we've got our sawmill up and running right here, I'm just going to keep on processing logs real fast. But we'll chop down another tree or two, and then we'll decide what our next project is going to be. I think a workbench is probably a good place to start. I also think that, like, we maybe want to follow the tutorial as a workbench. Where'd you go? There you are. I thought I lost you. I thought you were gone forever. Uh, I can pick up these planks right here, but I don't know if I need to pick up those planks. Let's take a look and see what other fun things we can build. So we've got a workbench over here. That's going to take nails. I don't think we have access to nails just yet. It looks like some of these things are going to be a little bit more complicated for us to make. We're going to need access to, to various resources. However, we can get a storage container going, which I feel like is probably a pretty smart idea. We've got weapon racks. We've got a firewood stand. We've got a plank stand. We've got a log stand. Let's go ahead and actually I would say let's get you know one of these guys going right here there we go we'll kind of like put in like maybe two of these dudes over on this side there we go and so we've got that all nice and done basically I'm just gonna blueprint all this and then I'm gonna build it uh, so we've got that there Okay, so I've got all of our various stands over here. I've got, like, a stand that's going to be for our planks. i got stands for logs. i got stands for sticks. And so, you know, it's kind of crooked, but I, I think it'll be fine. So now I've got to go on, like, a great adventure to see if I can find enough sticks to actually get this stuff built. It's going to take a little while, so we're going to probably have, like, a rough cut right here. I really, really apologize. If this episode ends up coming out underneath, like, the 30-minute mark, I sometimes lose track of, like, my timestamps. So that that's the thing about playing, like, survival games. Ooh, corn plant. Nice. Ooh, piece of corn. Uh, one of the things about survival games is they usually necessitate, like, a lot of edits that I'm going to have to, like, move things around and whatnot, and then I'm going to have to, like, do lots of lots of, like, video production type stuff, just making sure all the clips come together and everything. And the side effect of that is that sometimes you lose track of your, you know, your timestamps. It is what it is, so sorry if that happens, but, you know, it's, it's a thing. I did want to point out probably the easiest way to get sticks is just to harvest logs. You can run around and pick them all up like one hand at a time or like one object at a time, but frankly that's not an efficient way to gather stickery. If you're looking for a ton of sticks, you just BAM! They actually incorporated the system from Green Hell into this game where you can kind of like harvest and sub-harvest items. You can turn like larger things into smaller things basically. And they give you a pretty good assortment out here too. And so this should finish off our storage I think. There we go. Yeah, dude, and there's our stick stand right there. I think we're we're looking pretty magic right now. We're looking pretty good. The only thing that we don't have is like a firewood stand, I think. I definitely think we're going to need a firewood stand, but other than that, let's take a look. We can actually plop another one down in here. Firewood stand, and I actually like the modular nature of this game. Like, I really, really actually like the fact that you just kind of, like, find stuff off the list and place it. Like, other games have obviously, like, done that. What is that weird ghosting effect on there? They definitely need to get rid of that. I don't know what that ghosting effect is, but I don't like it. Uh, we'll put that right there, and then we'll go ahead and tab on out of that, and then we'll just harvest this guy, and hopefully it gives us enough sticks to get that done. Because there is a lot of firewood laying around, and honestly, I, I'd really prefer not to just, like, leave it by the wayside. We are going to have to go hunting pretty soon, but I think we'll be okay. Uh, yeah, give me the firewoods. We'll kind of just throw those in there, dude. There we go. I don't know how much firewood we're going to need, but I assume quite that's a big pig. He could be a big pig, too. Oi! All right, so anyways... A little bit more firewood now that we're done with. I like, please don't sue me, Disney. I can't afford it, dude. I'm a poor YouTuber. I don't. I can't. I can't afford expensive AAA litigation. Okay, just let me have this. Let me do this this one time. 
Let me let me reference the thing like a single. I like the density and actually like the depth of the holders too. Like they actually allow you to store a lot of stuff. So I think we're gonna need a spear because we're gonna start looking after our needs as far as proteins go. If I want to make a spear, how hard is it to make a spear? I need a stone blade, five plant fibers, and some sticks. That's not too bad. I think we can make that happen. All right, so there's our recipe right there for our spear. So we should have hunting options now. Yeah, there's our spear. It looks like I can either throw it or I can give him the old little love tap right there. Oof, I'm going to have to do good on this one, aren't I? It looks like the animal aggro radius is pretty far. I don't know how high. I have no idea how high above this thing's head. Where'd the pig go, dude? The pig is a bigger target. Did he just vanish into the ether? Are we dealing with a ghost pig out here? I think we're dealing with a ghost pig, dude. We've got a super magical ghost pig. Oh, look, it's raining now. Okay. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It doesn't appear to be affecting much of anything, in all honesty. It doesn't seem to be affecting our thirst or anything else. That's like my solution, is I would just stand here and be like, ah, with my mouth open. Actually, as a survival trick, what you can do is if you can't build any type of, like, water catcher, what you can do is you can take these limbs and you can like like this guy right here you can take these and you can tie them into kind of like a rough triangle that all points down into one direction into like a can and if you do that on like eight or nine different trees that'll give you survival water for a little while assuming that you've got enough like cans and, and things like that to make it happen I'm assuming that there's lots of like detritus and things around uh, that deer seems like a good target maybe I'll try to get the deer Although it seems to be very much aware of us, so I wonder if I wonder if sneaking will make this any easier. I don't think sneaking is gonna make it any easier. Oh, the pig was in the lake, dude. Oh, he looks kinda mad. Oh, this was a mistake. I have made a horrible miscalculation. Can I have my spear back, please? Thank you. There we go. So we just take him out real fast. Ow! Am I bleeding right now? It, there's a large red cross on my screen at the moment. All right. Well, we've got protein. Well, that was the thing that I was worried about. Apparently, our character has a cannon of an arm. Look at the arc on that. There's no drop at all. This man just laser beams it like Dragon Ball Z style. Oh, it's right behind him. I'm going to try to get that bird right there, though. I got to get the bird. I got to get him. Oh, I almost took him off in his little leggy right there, dude. I almost got him. My spear's wearing out. Oh, we got him. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay, so the bird's down. Do I get anything from the... Oh, it's a seagull? This guy's going to taste terrible. Oh, you don't get any meat from the birds. You just get feathers. That's good to know. Uh, that's probably something I probably should have known about. All right, well, let's think about maybe the possibility of shelter because it looks like the sun is hanging real, real low, big guy. And, and so I think maybe getting some kind of, I don't know, fanciful shelter built feels like a good idea to me. Uh, so let's go ahead and we're going to dive on into here. How beat? Oh, you got my leg, dude? I didn't know there was locational damage in this game like a la Tarkov. That's kind of cool. Oh, we got a bone right there, too. I didn't see the bone get looted. Potato sprouts. Okay. Well, let's go to the foundations first. We're going to kind of, like, put this thing down out here. Uh, I think I'll probably, like, keep it back away from my little work yard, I guess. It looks like it's going to be all weird and cattywampus and, like, not in the right direction, but... We'll just make, like, a little tiny baby shack for right now. I don't want to... Oh, yeah, it's getting kind of dark. I don't want to... Oh, dude, am I going to get attacked? I don't want to get attacked. I'm a scared. I figure we should probably take care of our proteins at some point, so I got us covered right there. So we're going to prime this thing up right here. I got a campfire built so that we can actually, like, see what's going on. There we go. We got to get our protein levels back up because that whooping we took at the hands of the boar was not good. Apparently, I was bleeding the entire time. And I needed to bandage it, so I... I bandaged it. We've got like a little bit of ambient lighting now, but it is not much. It's pretty, can you see? I can't see very good. If anything attacks us right now, we are in a world of the creamiest doo-doo butter. It is not going to be pleasant at all. Hopefully I can get my proteins filled back up though from this right here. This is going to be what's up. I'm ready for it. Going to make myself some steakies. 
Making some of these carnitas out here, dude. There we go, there we go, there we go. My impression is maybe that I need to hunt a little bit more. I don't think any of this stuff can actually be cooked. I bet we can put water inside of there, though, and it'll be okay. I'll drink a little bit of water. It looks like that takes about half of our water to fill up a pretty small piece, in all honesty. Uh, I don't know if we're going to make it till morning. I need some I need some protein out here. I need some of that protein, unfortunately. I don't really see a whole lot of animals around. So this might be a kind of hold on to your butts type situation. I figured I'd show you the water purification process while we're waiting for daylight anyways. It's pretty simple. You just go out into the water and there will be an interaction point. And you can take the flask and you put it on the interaction point and it fills up with dirty water. If you come back and you interact with your fire right there, you can go ahead and throw that on in there. In fact, you can do multiple runs if you want. So I can show you the whole process here for getting it done. Apparently there's a bunch of logs laying around over here too. I'm about to make use of that. Uh, inside of here, we'll add some more water. I'm going to bring these logs back with me while I'm in the neighborhood. I don't know why there's just like logs sitting over here. I don't normally lose my resources, but apparently... In this case, I have lost my resources. Uh, I'm going to drop these on the ground. I'm going to harvest these up real fast just for more sticks and firewood. One of the cool side effects of being up late at night right now and like doing lots of cuts and edits and things like that is that I've been getting lots of gathering done for like the future portion of all of this. So anyways, what happened here is that the water boiled off too fast, so I'm just going to like empty this out right here. There's no point. And then we'll kind of go over here and we'll just kind of fill that up from right there. So now we have 60 units of fresh water, so that's nice. That'll ensure that we don't die horribly over the coming days. We've already used up half of it, but that's the way survival goes. I mean, everything is a resource expenditure. I got the foundation finished off over here. I know you can barely see it, but that is what it is. We'll wait for daytime, though, before we do the full synopsis. Cool. So I made a bed, and I used it to rest. That's kind of the faster way to do it. Don't worry about all the blood and stuff that's all over the bed. I don't know why there's blood all over the bed, okay? I have I have no part in that decision-making process. There's a boar over here. I think I'm going to take him down. We're going down, down, and another round. We're going down swinging. He stabbed me with his pig tuskies. It really kind of hurt. Now my arm is bloody. All right, so we'll throw that right there, and we'll harvest this guy. He looks like he's doing like the... Emote. I'd probably make like a <laughs> noise too if somebody stabbed me and murdered me in the face. Oh well. At least the pigs aren't hard to take down. That's the plus part here. That's the thing. I look at this as an absolute win. Uh, we are going to need some more protein, so I'm going to throw that in there. Our campfire should be going for a while. I've got some decent resources stocked up. We're not like in amazing shape right now. We could use a few more boards, but I'll get that going. We need to get some walls on this bad boy right here. No vampire sightings in the middle of the night. Our swarm, though, it doesn't happen until, like, day five or something like that. So, back when I first played this game, like, a year ago, when I said it wasn't ready, like, they were kind of, like, wandering around. I think I went, like, ten feet outside this little bowl right here, and there was, like, a bunch of zombies wandering around. Not the case anymore. Now they kind of, like, come out randomly, and they're points of interest. Maybe we'll see if we have time to go do a point of interest today, but I don't even know where we are in our timestamps. I warned you. I told you exactly what was going to happen. I Did I not say? Get those placed right there. I do like that the placement system is quick, dirty, and easy. Uh, it makes things simple. And then we can knock out one of these walls later on and put in kind of like a doorway. There's easy roofing as well, which is honestly like one of the big things that I care about. We need a bunch of logs in order to get these all done. Okay, I'm going to put in the doorway over here too, because why not? But the building actually works really, really well. Uh, of all the things that work for this game, I think the building system is actually... Pretty no muss, no fuss, in all honesty. Did my meat burn off? Oh, no, there it is right there. You never want to burn off your meat, especially not live on camera on the internet, okay? I'm trying to give you guys some real cautionary warnings right now about being a content creator. Just be sure you don't burn off your meat, okay? Especially not in front of an audience. That's an embarrassing situation to be in when you're trying to be in front of a room full of, like, 10,000 people and you burned off your meat, okay? Uh, we'll go over here, and we'll fill you on up. I see no reason not to boil off some more agua. And then it looks like we're going to have a nice little hut over here, I think. Boom. 
kind of get that going and then we'll fill it up in just a minute so I need like loads and loads and loads of planks I need loads and loads of logs let me get on that some of the trees appear to have regrown we're good on our nutrition for right now so I don't think we have to worry about our personal health like at all so let me just kind of get things done here we can also make a cart at some point I don't know when we're going to come to that point but we should be able to make a cart and I don't know where that's at but hey there's a cart right there but I need nails for it so we're gonna have to do forging unfortunately I've got a stone forge right here it takes an ass ton of materials and it looks like we can only place it inside as well I don't know what that scary noise was. I thought it was a snake for a second, but I don't think it was a snake. I think it's just our fire going out. I think that's what that was. I don't know if it had time to boil off the water. I'll check in a second. Got my last load of rocks all up inside my inventory right now, but I'm walking really, really slow because I never did upper body workouts. But we should have a forge very, very soon. There's our forge right there. Unfortunately, the rock that we just shed was not good enough to get our speed back up to par. Is there a rock storage? That's what I need, is I need, there we go, I need some rock storage over here. You gotta fight, man, man, you're right, to store some rocks. All right, so we need planks and nails for that, unfortunately. All right, well then I guess I'll just chuck all the rocks in the middle of the ground right here. I mean, I was gonna try to do this the sophisticated way, but apparently the game don't wanna be like that. Fine, now I've just got a big pile of rocks in the middle of my base. I can get the planks, but I can't make the nails just yet. I think I've got to have forging and whatnot. In all honesty, I haven't really... If we look at this guy right here, like, you can put the copper, like, the copper slabs up there, but I don't have access to iron just yet. I've only got copper in this little valley. So chances are, taking a look at the world map right here, I'm going to have to go somewhere else in order to get the iron. It's not exactly, like, noted where that is, but we know that this is copper because we live here, and I've been farming rocks this entire time, and it's given me quite the overflowing inventory of copper, and by overflowing inventory, I mean I've got three. And so anyways, we should be able to do that, but maybe I should focus on finishing up the house, but I feel like we're not going to have time to actually get that done. Damn. Damn. As much as I would love to, I think we're just about out of time right now. My name is Flattercat. Thank you for joining me. This is The Infected. We didn't see any of The Infected here today, but I do think that the game is forming up to be a pretty good sandbox builder, if nothing else. There are points of interest around the map. There's probably a number of ways I could have made this video a little bit more interesting. Like, as we go around the map, there's points of interest, so that's obviously a town right there. There's, like, obviously a town, like, right here, because you can see, like, the little roads or whatever. But I would assume that, like, once you get into these little areas, there's blueprints and stuff you can find that move you up the tech tree and, like, teach you how to make various technologies and whatnot. There's dangerous caves you can go down into. This map has changed a ton since, like, the game came out. So, like, when the game came out, like, a year ago, the map was just, like, this little square with, like, no real relief or otherwise sort of, like, designated areas that had any kind of, like, geographical figures or whatever. They're working on it. I mean, in the last year, it seems like the developers have made a lot of progress, and all the building stuff has moved smoothly. I've had no crashes. I've had no issues, whereas the UI can be a little bit cheap in some spots, like on these menus right here. I do like the backpack and the crafting table type display that they've borrowed from, like, Green Hell. I, I do think that that was a smart decision. Um, I do find water acquisition and, like, resource acquisition to be pretty satisfying. So maybe we'll stream this one. Maybe we'll put it up on Twitch TV so that you guys can check it out a little bit further. And we'll get to see the zombies and whatnot because that's going to be, like, four or five hours uncut. So anyways, my name is Flattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we have the infected. If you're worried about the graphics, just be aware that I turned the foliage all the way down so that I could see stuff, like, sitting around on the ground. The foliage is just so damn thick. Uh, inside the settings we've got you know there you go there's your audio split right there I do like that they give you a few extra options with sound effects ambient and all that kind of stuff as far as video stuff goes I have the foliage all the way down so that I can see for the purposes of the video and find things to eat and keep myself healthy but you do have some options right here to play around with when it comes to the post processing the shadow textures all that kind of stuff uh, the camera right here you've got full mouse controls that you can fiddle around with to make things like at your level and you've got fully rekey bindable key binds as well which I agree with that's fantastic so anyways I I will see you all later. Thank you for stopping on in. I'll have something hot and fresh for you tomorrow off the Indie Skillet. And until then, bye-bye, everybody.